Hello ladies and gentlemen of the UPW Universe and welcome to MCW 176. We are live here in Phoenix, Arizona for tonight's event and we have a jam-packed show for you guys as we get set for MCW Respect this Saturday night. Starting things off, we're going to go ahead and get our, a tag match going between Blood Money and the Campbell Club. Brian Brutus and Oxley facing up against uh, Cody and Jack Campbell in our opener here. Uh, right after that, we have Donna Kay and Emily Shepard, the women's division, sets a face off. We're again going to switch to our mid card match of the night when DGX faces off against Adam Crozier in a submission match. Devin Porter and Deuce face off after that. And of course, our main event of the evening Obliteration versus La Armada del Mexico in a six man tag team match. Like I said, we have a fucking jam-packed episode of MCW ready for you guys here tonight, and I cannot wait to go ahead and get to it. Yeah, I'll be honest but it. It's a fucking risk that we're having a submission match. I don't know if it's going to be good or bad. It's probably going to be bad. Just knowing these fucking games. But we're going to see how a DGX and Crozier do tonight. We're going to see if Crozier can finally put DGX away. DGX will finally, finally put him over. Shake it off all the craziness for SCW. <laughs> Can't wait for this episode of MCW. Neither can I, and luckily we don't have to wait much longer because our first match of the night is ready to go right now. So let's go ahead and get to it. Well, there they are, Brian Brutus there on the left, Oxley on the right, Blood Money, flanked by Damian Deaver, making their way down to the ring as betting begins for our opening match of the night. What's up, Yanni? Currently busy, but lurking. Well, I appreciate the lurk, fam. Now, pretty much every member of Blood Money has had their own issues to deal with as of late. Over on MCW, Oxley's had his hands full with Duncan Jones, Tyler Van Diver, and the European Championship. Brian Brutus has been dealing with Christopher Wolfe over the past few weeks. But on the opposite side of the fence, the Campbell Club here. Well, they've had their hands full with Deuce and the Kiwi Buzzsaws. But last week, we saw that sort of coalition implode on itself when Deuce attacked both TJ and Devin Porter after their tag team match, after their failure to defeat the Campbell Club in tag team action. Now, the Campbells, they feel that's left themselves open for a match tonight. And so they laid down the challenge to Blood Money. Jack Campbell says that since he's been gone, since he was out with injury, Blood Money have sort of risen to become a dominant faction here on MCW, and he wants to see what they're made of. And so Jack Campbell, alongside his brother Cody, gets set to face off against Blood Money. Brian Brood is going to start this matchup, so will Jack Campbell. 
fuck both these teams. Fair enough. And Jack Campbell, oh, right into it, using his quickness to his advantage. Going for the cover on Brian Brutus early, only gets a two. I think Brian Brutus is a little shocked there that Jack Campbell came out of the gate this hot. And due to that shock, took just a second there to kick out of that pinfall attempt a moment ago. But now, Cody Campbell legal, looking to pick up the pieces. Going for the pin himself, only a one count this time. Cody trying to pick Brutus up, but the Brutalist finds the counter. Able to take him down to the Dragon Screw now. Makes that tag out to Oliver Oxley. Oh, and Oxley with a punch in the midsection. Another one. Going to grab Campbell, bring him up onto his shoulders. But Campbell finds it, finds it, escapes, slips through the back door, and now takes him down to the flatliner. Cody now following up. Oh, ripcord forearm just drops the Brisbane Bruiser. Tag made now. Back to Jack. Jack trying to block, but Oxley catches him. Now has him up on his shoulder and deposits Campbell over the top rope and down to the floor. Referee going to begin his count. Oxley going to talk some smack here to Cody Campbell, it seems. Jack moving his way around ringside. Has his eyes on Damian Deaver. Deaver doing the smart thing, trying to get away from Jack Campbell here. He know, he's seen enough tag matches in EPWA to know what's coming. And sure enough, Jack Campbell getting a couple of strikes in on the, the diamond right there. And Jack Campbell now off the ropes looking for a clothesline. Oxley able to sidestep him. Now a couple of stomps there. Campbell, though, runs right into a boss man slam. Jack trying to crawl. Oxley catches him, grabs him by the foot, and sends him knee first into the canvas. Yeah, it always does, doesn't it, Brendan? <laughs> Oxley now has... Campbell up, and this time a stun gun over the ropes. Thought for a second going to send him to the outside again. But now tag is made to the Brutalist. And Brutus just tossing him across the ring by the foot. And now stopping his foot into the midsection, firmly pressing it further into the gut. And grab Jack by the throat, by the neck. Toss him across the ring, and again, stomp to the gut in trying to squeeze the air out of him. But Jack finds an opening, now going to the top turnbuckle, and off the ropes, takes him down with the Meteora. Going to tag in Cody, but he gets caught, Brutus looking for the bear hug, Campbell with the reversal. Can't forget that Cody Campbell is the most adept submission specialist out of the trio. And you can see that on display right there as he applies a Fujiwara trying to force Brutus to submit. But the point is, it is very difficult to get Campbell into a submission, even harder to maintain it. Campbell knows so many ways, he knows so many submissions and knows the escapes to all of them. But now Oxley Legal once again takes him down with the snap German suplex. Has him by the wrist. Couple of stomps to the side of the head. And again, grabs him by the wrist. This time stomps to the back and... Oh, boots to the face. Yo, what's up, Ice Wolf? How you doing? If I had a nickel every time I wanted a fantasy book, Blood Money, I would have two. Which is weird because I've wanted to book, book him more than once. Alright, Dr. Beefish Burps. <laughs> Oxley now going to lift Campbell up and slam him down with that Brisbane slam. Going to go for the cover now. Hooks the outside leg to put him away. But Jack right there to break things up. Oxley quick to adapt to the situation. Takes Jack down to the quick sleeper slam. Oh, but Jack trips him up. Referee now counting Jack out, but has the damage been done to Oxley? No, able to fight back into it. Sends Campbell over the top rope and down to the floor. Now Oxley's to the outside, and hold on a second, going after Drew Campbell, and brings him down with a German suplex. Still has the wrist locked, follows up with a dragon suplex. And oh, now a straight jacket to finish off that trifecta. Oxley targeting the Campbell who's not even in this match, just like Jack was going after Damian Deaver earlier. And I think Cody Campbell's got his eyes on Deaver now. 
Referee continuing to count as Oxley just conti continues to beat the hell out of Drew Campbell here. Well, Cody Campbell getting it back inside. And now breaks the count at eight. And, oh, just sends Oxley sort of into the ring there. And Oxley, he doesn't want any of Cody Campbell going right back after Drew takes him down. Now it turns his attention back towards Cody. And I don't even know if I, if I should continue commentating at this point. I'll be honest. These guys are just doing whatever the fuck they want now. God, I love 2K22, don't you? Well, count of seven now. Campbell's going to get back inside. Is Oxley going to do the same? Yes, he finally does. And now Cody taking down Brian Brutus with a DDT over the top rope. And that's going to prompt Oxley to take out Jack Campbell. How the fuck is Diamond, D Diamond Damian Deaver the first person to bleed in this match? He's not even in the match. At least Ox Oxley respectfully picked up the blue Campbell. Yeah, I guess so. Man, this game fucking sucks, bro. <laughs> the AI is just so fucking stupid. I'm just asking myself, at what point do I just say, fuck it, take control and get these fuckers back in the ring? Because right now, it seems like these fuckers are just selling for t TV time. Well, Oxley back inside, and never mind. Wait a second, Saren face to face with Cody. Finally, these two are attacking each other for once. Never mind. Oh, just lays Oxley out with a super kick. Turns his focus right back towards Brian Brutus. Who just decks him with a forearm. Selling for the 45-minute XW show they have. I guess so. Well, Oxley gonna not bring him back inside the ring. Instead, gonna send him into the apron. Oh, Cody, just get back in there, you fucker. All right, well, that's progress, I suppose. <laughs> or maybe not. Okay, here we go. They're fighting each other again for a second, but I guarantee Cody's going to go right back after Brutus here. Oh, maybe not. Takes Oxley down again, and now goes for Brutus. All right, fair enough. Okay, now he's going for fucking deep. Never, no. Nope. I, I don't know what Cody's doing right now. I really don't. Oxley's going around trying to... What the fuck is even happening now? <laughs> I'm so confused. Yep, yeah, this... This is 2K22. This is what we upgraded to. Because 2K19 was obsolete, remember? Wait a second, they're finally beaten back inside the ring. Oxley. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking at Deaver fucking bleeding outside. It's not even in the fucking match. Why the hell is he bleeding? Now, I'll have to go back in time for that one, brother. We'll have to go back to like SmackDown vs. Raw for that shit to happen. Cody Campbell saying, come on, Oxley trying to bring it. And brings him down with that spine buster. Tag made out to Brian Brutus. Campbell trying to crawl to his corner, to his brother. And oh, tag is made to Jack. Campbell with a kick to the gut. Lifts Brutus up, looking for a fisherman buster. But Brutus turning it around into a clothesline. Tag now made back to Oxley. 
I heard the show was going to shit without me actively watching, with, so, with many liberties being taken, so I knew I had to return as soon as possible. Well, things have calmed down for now. And we could see the end of the match here as Jack Campbell applies a Dragon Sleeper. Trying to force Oxley to submit. Cody Campbell got a trip. But no, Oxley, able to find the escape, takes Campbell down to the snapmare, now brings him down to his knees. And finishes him off there with a snap DDT. Now going to pick Campbell back up. Brings him face first into that top turnbuckle. And, oh, and a couple of frying pan chops there. A third one. Jack just falls down to the mat as Brutus gets tagged in. Once again, Cody Campbell legal again. Quick kicks to the leg, looking for a second one. Brutus had that one scouted. Takes down Jack Campbell with a stiff right hand. And now going back to work on Cody. Alon pulls him in. This time he's got the bear hug applied. Is Campbell going to submit? Jack Campbell nowhere to be seen. Brutus just took him out. And oh! Cody Campbell able to hang on for quite a while. Brutus exerting himself. Couldn't hold him up for any longer. Just lets him down. But now, practically fe feeds him to the Brisbane Bruiser who's that spinning power slam but does not get the three counts. Campbell kicks out at the count of two. Oxley looking for, I believe, the Brisbane slam right there. But Campbell with the reversal. Oxley taking him down. Has him by the wrist. Couple of boosts to the side of the head. But now Campbell back up to his feet, turns him over, and Campbell has him by the arm, grabs the other arm, and has him locked in to the Border City stretcher. Is Oxley going to tap? Middle of the ring, Brutus getting in there. Oh, no, does not break it up. No, now he does. Campbell able to maintain the hold there. But now Brutus breaking up the pinfall attempts. Now Brutus taken out of the action. Once again, we're down to two here. And Cody Campbell just going to lock him right back in to the Border City stretcher. Now there's nobody to break the hold up. Nowhere for Oxley to go, and he is forced to submit. I really Paul Russell's not signed a Ring of Honor, <laughs> Guest of Honor. I like that. Well, Blood Money put in a great showing tonight, but in the end, the Campbell Club gonna stand tall. Thanks to Cody Campbell in that Border City stretcher. But now we must move on to our next match of the evening. Stick around, because coming up next, we have Donna Kay facing off against Emily Sharp one-on-one. -on -one. Let's go ahead and get to it. It ended with a number, another Liberty-filled Campbell Club match, so I won't complain about your viewers, Jinx. Let's see, let me go ahead and pay, blood, uh, pay you out for betting on Blood Money, Brenda. There you go. Er... I fucked up. You know what? Enjoy the fucking extra cash then, Yanny. Enjoy the extra cash. <laughs> Brendan, I'll pay you out three. Since I paid Yanny out two on accident. Whatever, fuck it. <laughs> Bet 10,000 next time, Brendan. What can I fucking say, dude? <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get our, get our next matchup going. It is Donna Kay facing up against Emily Sharp one-on-one. -on -one.
making her way to the ring, accompanied by the Rebel, Roxanne Grace. From London, England, the rock star, Donna K. With the way not Greg Hamilton announced Roxanne Graves, I thought for a second that that was 2K Buggin' and Roxanne Graves, I thought he was announcing Donna K as Roxanne Graves, I'll be honest. But Donna K, she has been on a roll ever since her arrival to MCW. Alongside Roxanne Graves, these two have racked up win after win, Donna K especially, earning herself a shot at the U.S. Women's Championship a few weeks ago. But in the midst of all these victories, of course... From Vancouver, British Columbia, Emily Sharp. Of course, Donna Kay was uh, eventually going to draw the ire of Emily Sharp. Now, we saw last week after Emily Sharp's win against Roxanne Graves, she continued applying the sharpshooter on Graves, much like she's done to many other women in the past. But luckily for Graves, she had Kay, Izzy Phelps, and Jessica Taylor at ringside. Right there to help her out and get Sharp off of her. But after they thought that Sharp was done, once they ran her out of the ring, once they started checking on uh, Roxanne Graves, Sharp ran right back in with a steel chair and attacked Jessica Taylor from behind. This caused Izzy Phelps to chase Sharp up the ramp and get rid of her once and for all, leaving Donna Kay alone to tend to her friend Roxanne Graves. Now Donna Kay believes that that wasn't just Izzy Phelps fending off Emily Sharp, that was her walking out on Kay and Graves. And after a, a, bi a big argument earlier tonight between Graves, Kay, Taylor, and Phelps. Donna Kay has told Phelps and Taylor to not even come down to the ring for this match tonight. Donna Kay and Graves, they got this. And to Donna Kay's credit, thus far she's put in a, in a good showing against Emily Sharp, who's been... To, well, to say she's been on a roll, it would be an absolute understatement. Emily Sharp in 2022 has the best... The best overall record out of anybody in the entire UPWA. I believe she's now at 10 wins and 2 losses. But Donna Kay now going to go to the top turnbuckle. Look to give her a third loss here tonight as she dives off the top rope and gives her a big splash. Literally the rock stars. I like that. <laughs> When you have a formula, you have a great record. True words have, not, have never been spoken. But Donna Kay continues to go on the offensive here against Emily Sharp. Sharp is not in a good way here tonight. And if this pace continues on, we could see Sharp take her third loss this year at the hands of the rock star who just drives that knee right into the temple. Now it stomps to the shoulder, but Sharp finally turning things around. Quick kick to the side of the face. And just yanking on that arm, trying to dislocate Kay's shoulder. Now going to pick her up and bring her back down to the belly to belly. And now, oh, double stomp right to the arm. Sharp looking to follow up here. Kick right, oh, right to the face it looked like there. Looked like her knee caught the face. And now Sharp following up, looking for the Ushi Garoshi. Goes right for the pin, middle of the ring. Has the outside leg hooked, but only a two count. Emily Sharp arguing with the referee there a little bit. Believes that was a three. But now just drags K closer to the middle of the ring as she now applies the sharpshooter in the center. Is Donna K going to tap out? Sharp sits back further. And Donna K, she put in a great showing, but in the end... Emily Sharp is just on a different level.
Sharp is a damn bully. This is what happens when you allow maple leafers into your wrestling promotions. Maybe one good Canadian. Yeah, anyway, what happens when uh, maple leafers get into your wrestling promotion? They lock, they lock in the storm drain every two minutes. God fucking damn it. Well, like I said, Donna Case, she put in a great showing here tonight, but in the end, it just wasn't enough to overcome Emily Sharp and her devastating sharpshooter. But now it is time for our mid-card match of the night. We've seen two matches end in submission so far, and neither of them were even submission matches. But coming up next, we have a submission match as DGX goes one-on-one -on -one with Adam Crozier. Alright, let me pay the bets out real quick. Congratulations to whoever bet on Emily Sharp there. Alright, there we go. <laughs> Are you happy I didn't pay Yanny this time, Brendan? <laughs> you know, I see a Canadian locking in a sharpshooter for a surprisingly easy win, and I wonder to myself, maybe I like Goldberg over Brad. <laughs> Don't let, don't let Brett hear you saying that. Alright, let's go ahead and get our next match going, though. It is DGX Adam Crozier one on one in a submission match. Well, we've already seen one member of Blood Money be submitted earlier tonight, and after Damian Deaver accepted this challenge from Adam Crozier on DGX's behalf, you have to wonder, is this the night where Crozier finally gets one over on DGX, and will DGX be the second member of Blood Money to tap out here tonight? Now, this all started a few weeks ago when... Damian Deaver issued an open challenge to anybody on the MCW roster. Issued one open challenge for DGX and one for Brian Brutus. Adam Crozier made his debut by accepting DGX's challenge. And in relatively quick fashion, the Alabama veteran was able to put the second, center, second city center away. Uh, after a show of respect between the, well, from DGX rather, that was not reciprocated by Adam Crozier, a match was made for the following week of MCW, where Crozier put in a much better showing but still came up short against DGX. Now he figured it was over by that point, but Crozier did not take the loss lightly. Attacked DGX after the match once again, and then last week went on to attack DGX while Blood Money were. Well, uh, it went on to attack DGX after his draw against Christopher Wolf. Now, earlier tonight, Adam Crozier he issued the open challenge. Well, he issued the challenge back to DGX. For a submission match, saying that it is cowardly how DGX has beat him in the past by pinfall. And if DGX thinks he's really better than him, then he needs to make him submit. Let's see, I may or may not be biased considering I literally got blood money <laughs> due to DDD getting busted open. But Adam Crozier sucks so hard that he should be on the on the next Dyson vacuum. That's where the Dyson vacuum is. Oh, I'm, I'm fucking slow as fuck, bro. 
Well, DJX looking for the, uh, the first submission here. Has a Cloverleaf locked in. But Crozier manages to fight out now off the ropes. Oh! Just caught him with the Inzagiri. It looked like he was going for a clothesline at first. Wasn't going to meet the trajectory needed. And so adapted on the fly. Turned it into an Inzagiri instead. You may not like him, but you have to respect the in-ring ability of Crozier. Takes him down to the backbreaker now. Pulls him in. Goes behind. Looking for a half and half. DJX with the reversal. Crozier rolls through. And DJX rushes in. Gets caught. Crozier turning it back around. DJX with a kick to the gut, though. And now sends Crozier over the top rope onto the apron. Oh! Club across the face. And brings him down to the floor with a drop kick. Both for wildly different reasons, or maybe very similar ones. I'm not sure who. Uh, I'm not sure for. I don't care enough about that bum to look into his personal life. Let's see. Both men back inside the ring. Oh, DJ's gonna turn him around. Crows with a, ver a reversal. The quick back elbow caught him, and now brings him over the top rope again. And oh, dropping DJ's with the Inzagiri. Now Crozier up to the top turnbuckle, calling for DGX to get up. This is a very precarious position, but <coughs> and that's why it was precarious. Going all in and crashes and burns on the floor. DGX trying to capitalize. Picks Crozier up and gives him some snake eyes across the ring apron. Going to pick him right back up. And now DGX getting back inside the ring. Crozier going to get in there as well. And DGX outplaying him. Quick hot shot takes him down. And another hot shot now. Well, now Crozier fucking learning from his mistakes there. Oh, able to block the first right. But DGX breaks through the defenses. Takes him down to the uppercut. Now Crozier's got him, though. Turns him around. And a backslide. Just driving DGX into the mat. Now again, looking for that Inzagiri. This time, DJX has it scouted, sidesteps him, goes behind, gets caught with an elbow. And now Crozier from behind. Oh! What a suplex there, dropping DJX on the back of his neck, follows up with a quick dropkick to the back. Quick right hand. Oh, and the Anarch Knee delivered by Crozier. Just laid DJX out with that one. Now setting him up, looking... For the Crozier cage. Middle of the ring. He's got it fully applied. Can DJX escape the hold or will he be forced to tap out? Now Crozier going to let him go. Move on to another submission perhaps. Going after the arm now. Trying to dislocate his shoulder. Oh, but DJX now finds a counter. Quick Pele takes him. Rocks him back. And DJX going up. And brings him down with that DDT. Edwards is calling for fucking spots. This is a submission match, not a spot contest, you clown-ass clown. Hey, any match can be a spot fest if it's indie enough, Yanny, any, all right? You just gotta have that indie imagination. DGX, though, with more of a hardcore Holly imagination as he just lays Crozier out with the Alabama Slam and now has the heel hook applied, trying to force the tap out. Is there not rope break in this fucking match? Because Crozier was reaching them fucking ropes. But either way, Crozier able to escape the hold, free his leg, but you have to expect the damage has been done to that limb. It's going to be harder to walk on that leg now, and you can see it already taking effect. But Crozier... Oh my god! And that one caught DJX across the bridge of the nose. DJX may have a, have a broken nose after that one. You can see the blood pouring down him. <laughs> and again... The damaged leg affecting Crozier. Dives off the top rope, but again missteps. But now it goes up and over with some code red. Yo, what's going on, Brian? Now Crozier, oh, back elbow caught him. Follows up the second one, still has that wrist locked. And gives him a third, drops DJX down to the mat. But Crozier again setting up here in the center of the ring. He's got him, double leg takedown. 
steps through, pulls him back, and locks him back into the Crozier cage. Now he's got it fully applied, and, and DGX taps. Adam Crozier finally gets his victory. Well, Damian Deaver bragged earlier tonight about how DJX has not yet been defeated since joining Blood Money, but this right here, this match marks the end of that statement being true. Here is your winner, the chosen one, Adam Crusher. Adam Crozier picks up his first victory here in the UPWA at the expense of DGX. But now it is time for our next match of the night. Devin Porter and Deuce set to collide after their alliance imploded last week. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. For now, let's go ahead and get our fucking music going here. There we go. And I'll go ahead and get the best paid out real quick. Except no one wins. <laughs> Stop fucking going for spots. Uh, at least he didn't win with, via the single leg Boston Crab because I would have smashed my phone in a tiny bit and then mailed it to Crozer. Yeah, that. <laughs> I know how much you fucking hate the single leg Boston Crab. Yeah, that would have been fucking awful for you if you wanted it. Does he even have the single leg applied? <laughs> like, is that even in his move set? Or the bonsai trio, bro, honestly. <laughs> no one wins in a world where Crozier wins. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and get our next match going, though. It is Devin Porter taking on the purebred athlete, Deuce. Without any further ado, this match gets set to come at you here in just a moment. Real talk, I would have applied it to him, but I can't, I couldn't stand having uh, having to hate one person so much. <laughs> the following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring, accompanied by Wild Thing T J Porter from Auckland, New Zealand, weighing in at 300 pounds. The Punisher, Devin. Now, for the past month at least, the Kiwi Buzzsaws, along with Deuce, have been targeting and trying to take out the Campbell Club. Last week, we saw the Porter's latest attempt at doing so when they took on the Campbell Club in a tag team match. But when they were unable to defeat the Campbell Club in what was a barn burner of a match, no less, they came very close, but were, ju were just short of knocking off the Campbells. Well, this man was not too pleased with their performance. And his opponent from Blackpool, England, weighing in at 248 pounds, Deuce. Yeah! Last week, after the Kiwi Buzzsaws failed to defeat the Campbell Club, Deuce absolutely snapped after weeks of pent up aggression after he he and the buzzsaws have taken several losses at the hands of the of the Campbell Club over the past month Deuce couldn't take it anymore and took his frustrations out on the Kiwi buzzsaws but of course an act like that isn't going to have his repercussions and Devin Porter sure ain't going to take that beating and walk away. 
Now Devin Porter and Deuce, these two combustible elements collide here tonight on MCW 176. And Deuce, right out of the gate, exhibiting his strength. Does not matter how big and bad you are. Deuce has the ability to overpower you if he so wishes. And now just going to town on Devin Porter, unleashing punch after punch after punch. Looking for a few more, but this time Porter with the reversal, able to get into the mount and give him a few forearms. Calling a man an Australian when he's clearly a New Zealander is probably more offensive than Adam Crozier's existence. Great clothesline there from Porter, but Deuce now with the reversal. And again, trying to deliver those shots, but once again, Porter has him scouted. I really thought he was Australian, just like I thought Deuce was Canadian. <laughs> Early to send the laser uh, key bird flag in the Discord again. By the way, did you make that or did you like find that online? I'm just curious. Oh! Able to avoid the clothesline now. A kick to the gut from Porter. Lifts Deuce up. And drapes him across those ropes with, with some snake eyes. I was thinking he made it, but I'm also thinking it's like some really fucking old meme from like tw 2009 or some shit. <laughs> oh, Porter with a string of offense there, taking Deuce down. Now going to the top turnbuckle. It's never a good sign when Devin Porter goes to the top rope. And it's an even worse sign for his opponent. Mutually assured destruction connects. Going for the pin, but only a two. It just conveniently applies to the Kiwi bus. <laughs> now it has him by the throat. Lifts Deuce up and plants him down with a Punisher bomb. Going for the pin, only a two. Somehow, some way, Deuce manages to kick out to get that shoulder up and stay alive. Now, I think Deuce thought this match was going to be going in the complete opposite direction. It's starting off, it was going in his favor, but Devin Porter found a few counters to gain the offensive, and since then, he has just been on the attack. Trying to pick Deuce up, but finally, the purebred athlete finds the reversal. Taking a second to contemplate his next move, turns him around, and from behind, no reversal. Now it's Porter back in control for the moment, but Deuce takes him down to the clothesline. And now again, Deuce with that full mount unleashes those left punches right into the face. Grabs Porter from behind, gonna bring him face first into the turnbuckle. And has that arm pulling against the rope, trying to take... Porter's ability to use that left hand away. And now sends him face first into the corner again. Now Deuce shoots him off the ropes. And oh my god, what a pounce to the big man. Now TJ Porter, he's seen enough trying to get into Deuce's head. But Deuce is having none of it. He has a mission. And he is laser focused on Big Dev. Continuing to go to work here. On Devin Porter, kicks in the gut. Gonna lift him up and bring him down with Deuce's Wild. Now the cover has the outside leg hooked. But only a two. I think a good a good portion of us thought that Deuce is gonna tag TJ for half the match. Now that's only tag matches. Deuce into the corner now, setting up, waiting for him to get back out to his feet. Rushes in and just drops him with that gore. But Deuce ain't finished yet. Looking to finish him off with some Deuce's Wild. But Devin Porter finds the reversal. Now lifts him up and slams him down with a Michinoku. Or rather, rather a Falcon Arrow. I always get those mixed up for some reason. And now Devin Porter once again. The Punisher Bomb connects. But Deuce somehow kicks out. Once more, TJ, well, tr uh, trying to 
encourage his big brother, I suppose. And big Devin Porter going to deliver a big MAD off the top rope once again. Now has Deuce by the throat for a third time and plants him down for perhaps the final time with the Punisher Bomb. Well, I'm not going to lie. I didn't expect Devin Porter to get the win. <laughs> I really thought Deuce had this. But I'm not disappointed. I think Devin Porter really fucking needed a win. Here is your winner, the Punisher, Devin Porter. Thou shalt not fuck with a giant Kiwi bastard with no shirt on. The first commandment of the New Zealand Bible, and it couldn't be any truer here tonight, as Deuce just learned. I'd like to imagine TJ fucking just has a New Zealand Bible on him. And just threw it at Deuce after the match. Tell him to read up on his New Zealand religion before he fucking challenges the buzzsaws to another fight. Alright, but now it is time, ladies and gentlemen, for our main event of the evening. Stick around because coming up next we have a six man tag team match. Obliteration reunites for the first time since Wrestling Palace to take on La Armada del Mexico. And I cannot wait to see this one play out. <laughs> Brother TJ, get the team. The fourth commandment is, thou shalt not call a giant <laughs> kiwi bastard with no shirt on in Australia. <laughs> Let's see here. Devin Porter going to get the win. Let me go ahead and pay you out, Yanni. I'm going to pay you out three actions. That was actually a fucking much better match than I thought it was going to be. On my way to write up a full version of the Ten Commandments of the New Zealand Bible, for sure. <laughs> Alright, well while you're doing that, let's go ahead and get our main event going. Like I said, it is Obliteration team up for, for the first time since Wrestling Palace last year to take on La Armada del Mexico in the six-man tag team match. The Kiwis, Rosanna Storm, and Riley Anderson walk into a bar just to create battle for their countries. I can see it. Now, Johnny Nightblade, he has been one hell of a UPW champion thus far in his reign. He is currently the longest reigning UPW champion in history. This Saturday at Relentless, or at uh, MCW Respect, rather, he will have held the title for 168 days. But tonight, before he goes to Respect, he will team up with these two for the first time since Wrestling Palace as part of Obliteration. Chris Hunter there on the left, Joe Sullivan on the right. These two, as well as Johnny Nightblade, they have had their, well, to say they've had their issues with La Armada would be a massive understatement. 
These three individuals have a lot of history with Pedro Rodriguez, as many of you know. So when Pedro turned his back on Kenny and Johnny Nagley back at Soul Survivor earlier this year, that didn't just affect the Nightblades, that affected these two as well. They knew they had to stand by their brothers in arms in these trying times, and they have done exactly that for the past month. And now this Saturday at Respect, these two will face off against four members of La Armada for the UPW Tag Team titles. Not only will they face the Tag Team Champions Los Hermanos Rodriguez, but they will also face Aztexico in a triple threat tag team match. But again, before these guys go into their respective title matches this Saturday, they must first get through La Armada. And there's Marco Rodriguez leading the charge. Straight edge on the left. Santana Santos on the right. At a combined weight of 572 pounds. Marco Rodriguez and Santana Santos, those two will meet. Joe Sullivan and Chris Hunter this Saturday. And while they'll technically be on opposite teams as part of the triple threat tag, you have to expect it's going to be more of a four on two handicap match than anything else. And remember this match was requested, This match, the challenge for this match was laid out by Johnny and the rest of Obliteration. This isn't a match they had to compete in, but this is a match that La Armada accepted for the opportunity to weaken Obliteration before they go into their title matches. And give La Armada a better shot at walking out with all the gold. But now this matchup gets started. Johnny Nightblade going right after uh, Strader to start this matchup off. Kick to the chest, and now off the top rope looking for a springboard moonsault. Straight edge able to get out of the way. Now has both wrists and just drives that knee right into the forehead. Brings him down to the mat with the drop toe hold. Now picks him back up. Quick punch. The kick gets caught though. And now Nightblade from behind takes him down with a neck breaker. Quick forearm strike caught him. Going to bring him up against the ropes here. And now Nightblade shoots him off, slides underneath, and follows up with a Hurricane Rana take and Straight Edge down. Straight Edge trying to make that tag. Nightblade not going to allow it to happen. Instead, a leg drop right across the arm, doing its damage. Now the UPW champion going to make the tag out to Joe Sullivan. And the Sonoran Savage has his opportunity to have his way with the Armada. Going to push Straight Edge into the corner, turn him around, and Santana Santos made the blind tag. Joe Sullivan didn't realize. Oh! Doesn't matter though, Sullivan now going to bring Santos into the corner. And just driving that boot into the face. Oh, but Santos fights out, quick boot to the face of his own. Now a kick to the leg, looking for another one. That one gets caught. Sullivan back in control. And takes him down. Follows up with a quick leg drop across the arm. Turns his attention back towards Straight Edge now as the referee begins his count on him. And just, if Straight Edge ain't gonna leave the ring, then Joe Sullivan's gonna make him leave. But now Santana Santos takes advantage of, a, of the distraction. Plants, or rather spikes, Sullivan into the mat with a Frankensteiner. Now a tag made to Chris Hunter. And Santana Santos wasting no time and taking him down with a Hurricane Rana. And in comes Marco Rodriguez as well. But Marco Rodriguez 
Not as lucky as Santana Santos quickly gets taken down with that Samoan drop. Now a tag made back to Joe Sullivan. Looking for the right hand. Marco able to dodge, but he gets caught. And now Sullivan, some snake, or a uh, 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 <laughs> stun gun, rather. To Marco Rodriguez takes him down. And here we see Joe Sullivan go to the top turnbuckle. Not often that we see the Sonoran Savage go to the high rent district. But it was a very effective elbow drop that he connected. Now applying a submission here, trying to force Marco to tap out. But Marco finds the escape. Now a kick to the gut connects, goes over with that neck breaker, follows up with a knee drop. And a very devastating looking one of that. Going for a drop kick to follow up. Sullivan gets out of the way. Now a kick to the gut, looking for the DDT. Marco with a reversal. And oh! Now it's Sullivan taking her down. Yeah, the important thing done. You got them commandments. <laughs> Now Sullivan going to pick Marco back up. Is there in the Discord. I'll have to check it out later. <laughs> Sends Marco face first into the corner. Tag made to Johnny Nightblade. And just tosses him into Nightblade for a German suplex. Very innovative offense there. From obliteration. But Marco tossed right into La Armada's corner. Tag now made to Santana Santos. But Nightblade quickly takes him down. With that drop kick. And Nightblade over the top rope. Lays out. Santana Santos with a phenomenal forearm. Now gonna pick him right back up. There's another forearm. Kick to the gut gets caught. Santos spins him around, kicks the leg. Another one in a roundhouse as well. Follows up with a Snapdragon suplex. Jordan's going to see the Discord and be like, why is there a Bible here? <laughs> so I was looking to follow up, looking for a standing moonsault. Nightblade rolls out of the way as the referee reaches the count of six. And Nightblade tossed across the ringside area. Santos looking for the count out as he gets back inside. But Nightblade follows him in. Able to get back in at the count of seven. Keep this matchup going and keep on the offensive. With the Northern Lights. Now Chris Hunter tagged back in. Unleashing these quick jabs. But gets caught. No. Just. Oh my god. These shots to the gut. Santos is feeling them all. And follows up with a fist drop. You do not want to be on the receiving end of the punches. From Chris Hunter. A former boxer back in his heyday. Made the move over to professional wrestling, and he has been a dominant force ever since. Now brings Santos into the corner, turns him around, brings him to the top turnbuckle. Oh, and... Oh. Well, I'm not sure he's going to be a dominant force for much longer after that botch. I don't even know what to make of that, but that was a, certainly a misstep on Obliteration's part. And now you see Joe Sullivan trying to get involved. Chris Hunter takes advantage. Turns Santos around and unleashing these clubs in the chest. Giant Nightblade getting a shot in of his own. And finally relents. Santos falls down to the floor. Hunter right goes right to the outside to join him. And just continues to go to work. Santos finds the reversal. And now brings him down with a Hurricane Rana. Now Santos dropping the knee. Oh, and look at that gash. But Santos, he sees the blood, and he wants to draw more. And it looks like he did exactly that. Another cut is opened up on the other side of Hunter's face. And Hunter is not going to take that lying down. Just threw Santos into the seal steps. And you have to imagine that was a receipt. But Santana Santos not going to sell. Instead going to do a backflip. Drawing the ire of Hunter once again. And Santos trying to get back into the ring to escape him. Hunter just drags him right back outside. Two. 
Now Santos looking for the standing room, so once again, this time he connects. Hunter not feeling so good, but Santos picks him back up and brings him back inside the ring. And Chris Hunter right back up to his feet. Santana Santos off the ropes, takes him down with sort of a springboard lie detector. And now a tag is made to one half of the UPWA Tag Team Champions who just delivers a cross cutter. Should have called dibs. <laughs> I hope the clip y'all are referring to is that fucking botch in the corner we saw a minute ago. Again, 2K just continues to amaze me with how like how broken it can make a, they can make a game, you know? Hunter knocks into the corner, but able to quickly fight out with a quick back elbow. Now it has Marco. But now it's Marco fighting out with the elbows. The title of my dominant force. <laughs> and now it's Hunter fighting out. And Hunter now taking him down with a snapmare, drops the fist. But Marco right back up to his feet. Tag is made to Joe Sullivan. A marker going to send him into the corner. What's he thinking here as he brings Sullivan out? Gets on the middle rope and takes him down with that Tornado DDT. Now I'm going to pick him back up. Trying to bring him into the Mexican Armada, Armada's corner. But Sullivan able to fight out now. Turns him around. Setting him up. Looking for... Oh my god. Looking for the Southern Lights driver. Going for the pin. To put Marco Rodriguez away. But only a two count. Chris Hunter taken out straight edge for good measure there. But now Joe Sullivan looking for the snore and fly. It's still not finished. Calling for it again. Calling for it one more time. Joe Sullivan has Rodriguez up and he has him down. Southern Lights driver connects once again. And that's going to do it. You know, I have to say, that was a fine six-man tag team match. Everybody got involved at some point. Chris Hunter went on a fucking tear. Chris Hunter had his big-ass botch. And most importantly, it wasn't drawn out. Believable, believable finish wasn't drawn out. That was a good fucking six-man tag right there. This was a good episode of MCW. It's a shame that it has to end, but look on the bright side. Now that MCW is over, our next event is MCW Respect. And remember, that show is taking place this Saturday at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or after Survivor Series, whichever comes second. But at this time, I want to go ahead and thank each every one of y'all for watching. This was a fucking amazing episode of MCW. Couldn't have asked for a better go-home show. And also, I should probably go ahead and pay the bets out real quick. Congratulations to whoever been on Obliteration. Congratulations to Yanny. I'll pay you out a few times for that one. There you are. Yep, Survivor Series is Saturday. That's why I'm saying... At 11, 11 p.m. Eastern or after Survivor Series, whichever comes second. Let's see, I really thought they would have been kicked out, uh, kick out there. <laughs> now, Marco can only kick out a one. He can out, kick out a two. Come on now. It's fucking Marco Rodriguez. Alright, but as I was saying, I want to go ahead and thank each, each and every one of y'all for watching. Thank you, Yanni, Brennan, and Brian, all y'all for tuning in tonight. Uh, thank you, Yandy and Brian, for fucking being here from beginning to end as well. Gotta appreciate y'all. Again, be sure to tune in this Saturday for MCW Respect. Make sure to tune in next week, next Tuesday night for XW, XTW, and next Thursday night for MCW, both at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as usual. But until next time, this was MCW 176 Live. From Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, that may <laughs> that explains it. That's why Joe Sullivan got the fucking win.
because we're in this fucking home state. Anyway. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in. This was MCW 176, live from Phoenix, Arizona. I, uh, I will catch you guys next time. This is your boy, Doug the Dog 6, signing off. Have a good night. Have a happy, happy Thursday. I had to remember which day it was. And I'll catch you all next time. See you guys later.